My name is Mike Aben and welcome to my KSP campaign. I am here in Kerbal Construction Times simulation mode performing pad abort tests. Yeah, I love that. Yes, I'm in the process of building a new uh, low, low curb in orbit shuttle vehicle for my Kerbals. Uh, this one is going to be the Kuryu's and I just want to make sure the abort system works. Okay, there we go. There's nobody in that particular module. I guess that goes without saying. And there is a parachute there. There we go. And we also should ditch the heat shield and oh my gosh. Oh, this is not looking good. Oh, no. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Again, simulation mode. You want to remind that? Okay, let's reset and do that again. And uh, while we're resetting, I'll talk about what's coming up in this particular video. You may recall a couple of episodes ago that we sent the Karayan on its way to Minmus with Val and Bob and Rodbart on board. And they are just about there. And that's what's going to be featured in this particular episode is that Minmus mission and getting down onto the surface of Minmus for the first time. But I wanted to show you this because, well, quite frankly, I think this is really cool. The uh, escape tower comes from homegrown rockets. And uh, it comes with a built-in fairing. And I just love the way it bursts out of the fair. It goes, just busts right out of the fairing. Okay, this time I'm just going to spam the staging. See how that works. Okay, there goes the orbital module, there goes the parachute. Oh, this is looking a lot more encouraging. Yeah, I just wanted to show you that this is coming up. The curse stock is being retired after goodness knows how many missions it's performed. It's been my workhorse to get into low curb and orbit. But this is going to be the new one. This is going to be the Kuryu's. And you'll see this. Ah, oh, yes, we got to wait around for some of those explosions, don't we? <laughs> Yes, this is going to be uh, our new vessel for getting Kerbals into low Kerbin orbit. And you will be seeing this undoubtedly in a future episode, but for now, let's get ourselves to Minmus. Now on day 9 of its mission, the Karain and her crew have finally arrived and are performing their capture burn to insert themselves into a polar orbit about Minmus. And the reason why we're shooting for a polar orbit is because I do want to get EVAs in space over all of the biomes in Minmus. The, uh, the only other time I've ever had Kerbals to Minmus before this one was just a flyby many many episodes ago it was the Kerpalo 2 that performed that and during that mission we ended up getting EVAs over the lowlands, the midlands, the highlands and the slopes and so uh, this time what we're shooting the ones we're missing are the poles the flats the lesser flats the great flats and the greater flats that will complete our set and in fact actually before this burn before we even got to this particular burn uh, we had already performed Bob had already done the EVA over the poles we went over the south pole so uh, grab that one so we just have to grab all those ones over the flats which are nice easy biomes to spot from space so that's good there we go there's our capture so, that's part one of the mission, is going to be collecting those EVAs. Another part of the mission is also obviously going to be putting uh, a Kerbal down on the surface. For that, we have the Kegel along, our one crewed lander, and our lucky Kerbinaut that's going to be going down to the surface is going to be Bob, because he is the scientist and we want to maximize our science return. I also have a few contracts I'll be polishing off. Uh, one was to transmit some science from the sphere of influence around Minmus, uh, which I've already taken care of. I didn't show it to you because it's pretty dull and there's uh, quite a lot still going on in this particular video, so I thought I would just uh, kind of cut to the chase. Um, I also have this uh, space station contract uh, to put a space station around Minmus. Technically, this does qualify as a space station. It can house five Kerbals. It has... Uh, a docking port and has communications and power generation and stuff. The issue is, is that I've had this vessel was already in existence when I picked up the contract. So uh, the space station contract, I'll have to wait for something else. Uh, I have a contract to plant a flag on the surface of Minmus. Um, uh, obviously, Bob will be doing that once he's down on the surface. And finally, I have this contract to collect crew reports below a certain altitude over these various locations, four different locations. 
and the altitudes range from 7.3 kilometers to 4.4 kilometers. We're going to try and get those with the Karayan, uh, and getting down below 4.4 kilometers with the Karayan is going to be, uh, it might end up being kind of interesting. It's, we're going to be hopefully not too close to the surface when we're doing that. Mimus, of course, rotates from west to east, which is left to right on the screen here. So as we orbit, um, the various features on Minmus, including the waypoints and the biomes, will be rotating under us. And you can see here that we just missed a waypoint that's just to the right of our orbit. We'll have to get that as we come around to it. But there, there is one coming up up here. This is... Uh, X3LW and checking with the contract, it looks like we're going to have to perform a crew report at an altitude below 6,900 meters. So we'll just confirm that we do have the right waypoint selected with the waypoint uh, manager mod. And then we'll time warp over to the other side of Minmus from the waypoint and uh, bring down our periapsis by burning a little bit retrograde. Okay, that's that's just under 6,900 meters, but I do want to bring it down a little lower than that. But I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch over to RCS. I, I think I'm going to try and do as much of this maneuvering with uh, with monopropellant because, as I've demonstrated in the past, this thing has quite an access of monopropellant. So switching to RCS. There we go. There. Okay, that's less now than 6,500 meters. I do want to um, be quite a bit below 6,900 meters so that I'll have a long length of time or reasonably long length of time that I'll be underneath the required altitude because it's unlikely that I'll hit the waypoint right at periapsis. And it was while I was on my way to that waypoint that we passed over the Great Flats and was able to pick up an EVA report there. Great, 29 science, all right. Well, we'll transmit that later, but right now we are closing in. We're less than 90 kilometers away from our waypoint, but that didn't take long the time warp to that. And then it was just a crew report, and that's the first of our waypoints taken care of. Three left to go. And the next waypoint, uh, 3LJD3, which had to be done at an altitude below 7,300 meters, was done without any problems whatsoever, as was collecting the rest of the EVA reports over the uh, remaining biomes. That was easy enough to do. And I'm not going to show you those because, I don't know, I just want to speed this along, get onto the surface of Minmus. But I do want to show you the collection of uh, the crew report over the, the third of these waypoints uh kwqxj this one had to be done below 4400 meters and uh, actually it was this one that motivated my next decision okay i'm now below 4400 meters and less than 25 kilometers from my target but my altitude above the terrain is less than a kilometer and a half which i really don't like so as you can see, I am keeping my engines pointing down <laughs> so that if all of a sudden the ground starts coming up pretty quickly, I can hopefully uh, thrust my way out of here. The uh, Karayan does have a pretty healthy thrust to weight ratio when uh, most of its fuel is gone, so should be okay. Let's do a little time warping. I do have one waypoint after this one. It's at Jiffman's Cranny, and it's at an altitude of below 4,900 meters, which is higher than this one. But that particular waypoint appears to be above a plateau. So what my actual altitude above the terrain will be, I do not know. And I am, well, now I'm over two kilometers, so that makes me feel a little better. And I can now see the waypoint in the air. So that makes me feel all right. But I still, I still don't find this very comfortable. <laughs> you know, like if, if, if all of a sudden a ridge came up, I'm not convinced I can get myself, increase my altitude fast enough. I'm still about a minute away from periapsis too. So I think what I'm going to do with that last waypoint is make that near the landing spot. I'm going to make... Make the uh, when I go to do my landing, I'm going to do my landing right over that waypoint. That's going to be the plan. Oh, geez, I'm now at about a kilometer above the terrain. This is really sketchy. I don't like this at all. Anyway, yes, yeah, so definitely with, with I'm going to take get the last one with the lander. Oh, I'm here. Take that crew report. 
There we go. Okay. And now hopefully I'm still not at periapsis, but I'm almost there. And hopefully we'll be on our way up and out of here. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that last one with the lander. Do the crew report while I'm on my descent with the lander. And then land. And then there. That last waypoint's just decided where my landing spot is going to be. So I just brought my periapsis back up to around 10 kilometers and just started time warping to the point that my orbit was going to be crossing over where I wanted my landing point to be. And then it was just a simple matter of, oh crap! tank of oxidizer is leaking. No, this is not what I need. Okay, which tank is it? I don't see anything in red. That's no, not that one. It's not that one. Okay, forget it, forget it. Pack fuel balancer, come on. Oxidizer, oxidizer, there it is. Okay, that one's going down. Transfer out. No, that one's going down. Transfer, that's weird. Okay, well, there we Transfer that one out. Okay. Transfer that one out. These are all tanks associated with the Kegel, so it's obviously the Kegel where the problem is. Okay, I'm no longer losing oxidizer, but I'm still, well, other than knowing that it's the Kegel, yeah, that doesn't tell me. I don't know what tank it is. Okay, let's move the camera down to the Kegel and, oh shoot, I just pushed shift. Oh no. Oh shoot, okay. Oh, I just added about eight kilometers to my apoapsis. I'm not going to worry about that now. It's a good thing I was pointing more or less prograde. Okay. Okay. Forget forget that. I can't figure out what tank it is. <laughs> I mean, I'm not losing oxidizer anymore, but that alarm sure is annoying. Okay. The alarm just went off. No, it didn't. <laughs> okay, Bartner, come on. Let's get out there and fix this thing. So, Bartner, there's a reason why we brought you along. Let's grab a couple of spares. Actually, I think we only need one spare part to repair a fuel tank. But uh, bringing some extras doesn't hurt. Okay, let's get down to the Kegel. It has to be one of the tanks down here. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Nope. Get back up. Okay, let's see. Right click on that toroidal tank. Nope, that one's fine. Okay, the Oscar. Nope, that one's fine. Okay, let's move on down. Okay, is it this tank here? Nope, that one's okay. All right, there's just one left. The tro nope, don't. Nope, that's the engine. No, the tank. The tank there. Oh, there it is. Apply duct tape. Apply duct tape, and it is fixed. Oh, what a nuisance! I don't think I lost all too much in all of that so uh, let's get Bartner back up there and get ready to uh, send Bob on down to the surface hopefully we won't have any other dang it mishaps along the way so we time warped over to the other side of the planet from the waypoint we'll transfer Bob down to the Kegel there we go now it's time to send him on his way obviously we also made sure the Kegel was restocked up with fuel and oxidizer and life support. We'll activate this antenna. Bob has some communications and then we'll undock here. Oops, that's the wrong docking port. Where is it? There we go, undock. All right, switch over to Bob. There's Bob. Now this, the Kegel doesn't have any RCS, so we can't really back out of here, but what we're going to do is just uh, start taking a look at where it is we should start our descent burn. No oh, crap, already to the west of the waypoint. Well, no matter. Let's let's uh, let's start burning here. Bring down our periapsis again. You you want to keep your uh, coming in fairly shallow here. It's always kind of the idea, though, because of the way I pushed up my apoapsis back when I hit shift by mistake. Uh, I am coming down a little steeper than normal. I think I think that's all I'm going to do. It's a little bit tricky because I'm coming up over that plateau. I do want to make sure I have a, a reasonable amount of altitude. I don't want to be skimming right across the surface. Okay, so let's time warp. So we're about a quarter of a plan, a quarter of rotation away from our 
where we're shooting for our landing spot to be there, that ought to do it. And then I need to do a normal burn here to bring my trajectory over. And I can see here I need to burn towards Kerbin. So, nope, that's the wrong normal vector. Whoops, got a bit of a pause because it's auto saving. Okay. Yes, we'll pick the normal vector that's pointing towards Kerbin because I can see I need to burn towards the east. And I can see Kerbin's that direction. All right, that'll do it. Let's let's burn here. There we go. We're just going to pull that trajectory a little bit to the west. I can see I'm bringing up my periapsis at the same time. I'll have to bring that back down. There, that looks that looks all right. And we'll cut ahead a little bit here, where I noticed once again that the waypoint had rotated under my trajectory and is now to the west of my trajectory once again. So I'm going to have to burn once again a little bit more to the east. You know, I, I lose track of just how quickly Kerbin, or not Kerbin, Minmus, how quickly Minmus rotates. So I'm burning a bit to the east, but also a bit retrograde because I kind of want to do, I'm getting close and I want to, I want to slow myself down. Yeah. Burn a little bit more to the east, I think. I think so. I mean, I have been burning enough to the east, so. Let's burn a little more to the east. There we go. Let's see. Okay, okay. That's good. That's good. I don't know. I might have overcooked it here a little bit. I might be too far to the east now. Ah, screw it. Let's 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 just point myself retrograde. That's prograde. <laughs> uh, it looks like I'm still kind of moving a bit to the one side of the waypoint, but I, uh, let's just go this way. I don't want to waste any more fuel. Not that you know you're not going that fast, so it's not like you're wasting that much. You know what? No, no, no. Let's let's fix this a little. I think I did overcook it. Burn a little west. There. More. Okay, I am now going right over the waypoint. I am less than 20 kilometers away from the waypoint, so I mean, I can't imagine. This has got to be good enough. And I'm below 4,900 meters. My altitude, my my uh, altitude above the terrain is under a kilometer, but that's okay. My vertical speed is still just barely over negative 10 meters per second, so I'm not falling particularly quick. And although this thing had a pretty poor thrust to weight ratio on the moon, which had me uh, crashing into the side of a shallow hill, if you recall, on Minmus, this has plenty of thrust for Minmus. So I should be able to stop myself fairly quickly. So I'm just going to get ready to take my crew report. And I'm not really care. I don't care if. There, oh, there it is. Crew report. Come on, there we go. Crew report. Okay, that contract is now done. All we need to do now is land, and I think... I mean, what's below me looks alright. I might as well just... I think I'm just going to put myself down. Let's do it. So we're going to kill off our horizontal velocity. I am about a kilometer and a half above the surface, which is plenty. It should be a very comfortable landing. Okay, under 50 meters per second of horizontal velocity. Under 10. Okay, that's good. Let's point up. And we'll push that retrograde icon up to the top of the nav ball. So that we are just falling straight down. It doesn't take a lot of thrust to do that. go. Now we just follow ourselves straight down, uh, keeping an eye on our vertical speed, of course, keeping an eye on our altitude, but we are still at a pretty comfortable altitude, well over a kilometer above the surface. One thing about Minmus is it seems to take so long to get down. 
See, Minmus is incredibly forgiving when it comes to landings. Uh, most people would recommend for people doing their first powered landing to not go for the moon, even though the moon's an easier target to hit. But uh, take the extra effort, go to Minmus. Minmus is much easier to practice your landings on. It's much more forgiving because the gravity is just so much less. So even though Minmus is a little tougher to hit, start slowing ourselves down a little bit. Oh, I can start to see the lights, my landing lights, 300 meters from the surface. Two hundred. One hundred meters. Helps too to hit cap locks. That gives you finer thrust control if you turn on cap lock. Are ooh 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 little fa oh a little fast there. Got a bit of a bounce. Come on, straighten up there, Bob. Here we go. <laughs> Bouncing is one of the biggest issues. Okay, we'll turn off the SAS, and it's sitting there comfortably. All right, let's get ourselves some science. Well, I should point out here, you might be noticing um, that uh, Science Alert is working again. Yeah, I had it uninstalled last episode, but I now have it back. Uh, some kind user. Here, I'm going to use the transmit. You can see the transmitting is working fine. A kind user uh, on the forums there had uh, posted a patch that seemed to fix this issue, and it seems to be working just fine. So I'm transmitting what I can. Trying to get as much science back to the KSC as I can. I'm also keeping track of um, my electricity reserves. I don't want to end up using up too much electricity. Saving the EVA report for last because Bob is going to have to go out there and reset this equipment anyway. But it seems to be working pretty good. I think I can transmit that one too. Okay, seismic scan. Oh. Oh, that one's still transmitting. Let's wait to till that one's done before I start sending off any more. Oh, yeah, that one's taking a long time. Oh, it really did. I don't have a lot of electricity left. So I'll take these ones, but I'll just keep them. That temperature scan, I'll keep that one. Okay. Uh, and the mystery goo that you see there is just the other mystery goo I put on the other side just for symmetry, which isn't going to add much to the mix. So let's get Bob out and get out here. we got to plant a flag contract. Of course, I would be planting the flag anyway because Bob gets experience for planting the flag. Come on, Bob. Let's get our stuff together here. There we go. Woo! Minmus is just so much fun. I just love... The, the lightness of the gravity that uh, it's it's light enough to have fun with EVA report and surface sample of course it's light enough to have fun with um, but not too light like for instance Gilly which is orbiting Eve the gravity there is so light that it's annoying but here it's just fun <laughs> Bob certainly looks like he's having fun all right, just going to find a good spot to plant the flag here, get a nice view. Ooh, we can see Kerbin there in the background, way off in the distance. Okay, turn that off. Come on, there we go. All right, let's plant ourselves a flag. Ah, that's screenshot worthy, I think, right there. Okay, flag time. Plant flag. There we go. Oh, and of course he turns around the other way. I always find it unpredictable which way they turn when you put these flags down. And there it is. There's the flag. All right. Let's got to come up with something worthy to say here. Let's. Uh, oh no, no, wait, wait. This is the. Okay, this is the uh, Kegel. Kegel one, again, because this is the exact same vehicle that landed on the moon uh, a few episodes ago. Mmm, minty. <laughs> I guess that'll do. All right, there we go. Everyone always thinks that uh, 
Minmus looks like ice cream. I suppose it does. Let's take a look here. Okay, these are the uh, contract completions for all of those uh, crew reports that we did. Oh, more milestones. Uh, we have entered into suborbital flight above Minmus. We have landed on the surface of Minmus. We have walked on the surface of Minmus, and we have planted a flag on Minmus. And in fact, I actually have some more that I uh, got earlier that I just didn't show you. I got one for doing a spacewalk above Minmus and another one for doing a crew transfer above Minmus. So anyway, Bob is just going to uh, scoop up this science. Having too much fun, I think, bouncing around. And then come the question, you know, I can't just make this it, can I? I mean, this lander was built to land on the moon, so it has quite a lot of delta V. And in fact, right now it has uh, 1,357 meters per second of delta V left, more than enough just to get back up to the Kryon, which actually is only going to be a couple of hundred meters per second to get back out and get into orbit. So, uh, yeah, we got to get ourselves to some other biomes. The biomes tend to be packed pretty close together on Minmus. Do some suborbital hopping and see where else we can get ourselves. But uh, that's going to have to be for the next episode. Yeah, this one again is getting kind of long, so I'm going to draw it to a conclusion. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.